Hello, everyone. It is Mark Berman from TV Media Insights. It is Thursday, June 14th, and I would like to welcome you to our first video pod. Now, for the last nine months, I have been doing a daily podcast where I talk about what's happening in my favorite medium, television. Well, we have decided to go to the next step, and we are going to be videotaping myself every morning talking about television. I hope you don't mind looking at me, but I want to begin with showing you my official uniform for our video pod. Here is my TV Media Insights t-shirt. I also have a TV Media Insights hat, which I will put on at the end of the video pod. Um, I don't want to kind of hide my face on this first one. I guess you want to see what I look like. Well, this is me. We have a lot to talk about. So let's start with Dallas. Now, as you know, I highly recommended this show. I watched it again last night. I had seen the first seven episodes. I am certain this will open with record ratings for TNT for a regularly scheduled series. What is a little frustrating for me, I have to be honest, is I don't have access to the cable overnights, at least not anymore. So I have to wait like everybody else for those numbers. I get the broadcast network results, which I actually just got a few moments before I started this. So I have to wait for TNT to send me something, which is a little frustrating. So I'm hoping to have something for you shortly. And I will put it on our website at www.tv mediainsights.com. You can take a look for yourself. And of course, I will put it up on Twitter and on Facebook. And just to show you what a big fan I have been of Dallas over the years, and the advantage of doing this on video is I could show you things. Well, let's start with my Dallas, my first Dallas book. See this? I bought this book back in 1981 when Dallas was really starting to sizzle, and they started doing all these different books, and I started doing that. Now, let me take you to a recent book. I bought this about two years ago. It's a Dallas Bible. I've run this cover to cover. There's everything you could possibly imagine about that show in that book. This is one of my all-time favorite shows. In fact, if I had to rate it, I would rate it number four on my top ten TV options. And we'll talk about those other top ten at a later time. Now, let's talk about what's going on in the wild world of television at present. To do that, I have to put on my glasses because I can't see anything. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. Now, I have my cheat sheet right here. Here's my cheat sheet. I'm going to go through some items with you. When I do this every morning on a podcast, I am basically going through that. So let's start with today in TV history, my favorite thing in the column, The Gong Show. Would you believe that The Gon Show premiered in 1976 on this day? That was 36 years ago. It's totally insane. That, to me, was the precursor of America's Got Talent. If you like that show, you might have liked The Gong Show. If, you're little, if you have a little snow on the roof or less snow on the roof like I do, you remember The Gong Show. And on this day in 1997 was the series finale of The New Adventures of, actually Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, and that featured, of course, Terry Hatcher and Dean Cain. That ended after four seasons and 88 episodes. Now, I don't have the, I do have the official overnight results. I did not crunch them yet, but I'll give you a little uh, briefing of what happened last night. Here they are right here. In terms of the network results, Fox was number one. That was two hours of So You Think You Could Dance. That averaged a 4.8 rating and an 8 share in the overnight market. Second was CBS with a 3.9. ABC was a 3.0. NBC was a 2.4. And the CW a 0.7. You know, what can I say about the CW? Somebody recently emailed me or put a comment on and said that he thought I was being very unfair to the CW. I don't think I am. Listen, I'm trying my best. You know, whenever, the, whenever I look at their pilots, I just watch arrow over the weekend i gave it an endorsement i said i think this could work very well on the cw and unfortunately once the shows get on the air they just don't resonate so i don't know what's going to be with the network um in terms of last night you know one show that i really enjoy uh and i hope you're watching it unfortunately the ratings are not stellar dogs in the city on cbs second in the overnights with a 3.9 rating and a seven share behind so you think you could dance. It's skewing older, so it's doing about a one rating among adults 18 to 49. But I think for a lazy early summer night, it's a good option. And I'm a dog lover. 
Uh, I'm working from home today, by the way. And one of the advantages of doing so is my little buddy Buster is with me the entire time. And right now he's outside of this room. I'm in my office at home and he's taking a little snooze, which will do most of the day. That's what he does. Um, Elsewhere last night, uh, we had duets on ABC. It aired for, I'm looking at the schedule here, 90 minutes. I'm not into it. I'm just really tired about the, uh, I'm tired of these singing competitions. But I will, of course, have the full overnight results for you on our newsletter and at our website. And when I'm finished with this, I will crunch them. Now, I have an update on the upfront selling season. As you know, the networks are actively trying to sell their inventory for next season. Fox just completed its sales, and it's at a reported, I'm looking here, $1.95 billion in inventory or in advertising commitments have been made. That's similar to what it did last year, and apparently it sold about 80% of its inventory. Now, the bottom line is this. NBC is still negotiating business. The others are basically wrapped up. The networks are close to year-ago levels, considering the economy is still sluggish. That's a positive. Um, There have been CPM increases, and CPM is cost per thousand viewers, and that's been pretty much up in the single-digit range. I think ultimately the bottom line is with these schedules or or any, any kind of sales, you have to look at the programming. And if you look at the fall schedules on the broadcast networks, I don't think any of us are jumping up and down on how good they look. I just don't think they do. Now, oh, moving over to Criminal Minds, Jean Triplehorn, we know her from Big Love. She will be joining the cast of Criminal Minds in the upcoming eighth season. She is replacing Paget Brewster, who departed this season. I'll tell you a quick story. Um, a few years ago, a number of years ago, um, uh, to, to, if my math is correct, six years ago, I was having a conversation via email with CBS's head of scheduling, Kelly Kyle, and I had said to Kelly that I predict that Criminal Minds will deliver more viewers than the competing lost in the upcoming season. And he said he was really not sure of that. And guess what? I was right. Criminal Minds going into season eight, it's one of those shows that doesn't get any attention yet. It performs consistently and it could last for years longer. Now, speaking of long-running series, let's go over to Weeds on Showtime. Weeds is going into its eighth season. Well, the cable network has announced this will be the final season. Once it wraps up, it's doing 13 more half-hour episodes. It will have 102 episodes. For a cable series, that is significant. I mean, cable shows, remember, they don't normally do more than 13 episodes a season. And this show and Dexter are the two original series that the cable network really attributes to it getting on the map in original programming. Did very well for them. In the world of syndication, I have been getting the daily overnights for Bethany. This is the test run, six market test of a new talk show from Warner Brothers, hosted by Bethany Frankel. Am I excited to have Bethany Frankel as a talk show host? No, I am not. Come on. I mean, what is she, why does she even qualify? But, you know, she's not doing badly. The numbers came down 27% in the overnights yesterday. It opened on Monday with a 1.5. It dropped to a 1.1. But that is still up from the lead-in and the year-ago time period average. If it settles in at these levels, I am predicting that Warner Brothers will take Bethany out nationally. Plus, she airs in a lot of, number of these test markets, six of them. She airs out of Wendy Williams in some of these markets, and I think that's a very good fit. So right now, it's looking positive for Bethany Frankel in daytime. You know, what are you going to say? It is what it is. And coming up on the air tonight, if you're a fan of the NBA, we have Game 2 of the NBA Finals on ABC. I have the results for the first game on our website, updated thanks to the great Douglas Pucci, which, by the way, his review of Dallas was spot on. He gave it an A, and what I really loved about watching the show last night, as the show was running, people were tweeting his review. Very cool. What a different world this is now when the, you know, from when the original Dallas was on. It's so different. Over at CBS, Yes, it's all repeats. We have the second original episode on NBC of Canadian drama Saving Hope. That leads into Rock Center with Brian Williams, which I think is a completely wasted opportunity in the Thursday 10 o'clock hour. Um, Fox has week two of Take Me Out and The Choice of the two. The Choice did better than Take Me Out in week one. It did a 1-8 among adults 18 to 49. And we have another original episode of a show nobody is watching on the CW, Breaking Point. And again, I'm not trying to give the CW 
a hard time. It's just that their shows do not resonate. What do you do? Um, on cable, if you're a fan of Burn Notice and Suits on USA, they open their new seasons tonight. We have the season finale of the Paul E.D. Project on MTV at 1030. You know, my son is a huge, huge fan of um, Jersey Shore. And he watched the opening episode of Paul E.D. I don't think he watched any others. I don't think he was overly enthused by it. And then uh, a show that I just think is really sleazy, Tattoo School, is a season finale on TLC. And I don't know if that's coming back for another season. And, you know, before I depart on this first video pod, which I think is a really cool name for this, I'll tell you a brief story. I want to go back to Dallas for a second, how the times have changed. When Dallas was originally on, I remember, I was such a huge fan of it, I remember being on a weekend trip, um, and I could take my glasses off now because I am not going to be reading anymore. I was coming back from a weekend trip, I don't even remember where I went, and I remember I'm being in the car and it's Friday, and it's late Friday afternoon or early Friday evening, and I'm thinking, oh God, Dallas is on tonight. I have to watch it. What am I going to do? This was a long time ago. So I had to stop off at a motel and pay. I had to pay for the night to sit in my room and watch Dallas. And while I was there, I watched Falcon Crest. And I got back in the car and drove home. That was my wild and crazy weekend uh, from a very young Mr. Television. Now, of course, you don't have to watch shows when they air. You could DVR them. You could watch them on the Internet. The times have totally changed. What a difference the years have made. But again, I am anxiously waiting for the results of Dallas. I am assuming it's going to be record high. And I am hoping TNT will be kind enough to send me those ratings once they have them available. And I'm sure they have them available now, at least the overnights. And that is our first video pod. I want to thank you very much for joining me, and I'm looking for my hat. You'll have to excuse me, by the way. This is kind of a test run, so the backdrop is leaning on me, so it's moving as I speak, so that's why it's moving, but that's our TVMI backdrop. Here is our TVMI hat. I'm going to put it on. Here we go. This is me with my hat on. I had it on the other day on our Skypecast, by the way. I forgot to mention it. See the logo here? Very cool. I want to thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoy seeing me on video every day. My suggestion is don't watch me unless you have a tall cup of coffee in your hand. And I thank you for joining me, and I will be back with more news about my favorite medium, which happens to be television, tomorrow. Signing off, Mark Berman. <laughs>